Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, let's understand what is Spring Boot. Well, before understanding about Spring Boot, let's first understand what is a problem using Spring Framework and what problem the Spring Boot addresses. Well, as we know that Spring Framework is a very popular Java W framework for building web applications as well as enterprise applications. So Spring is very popular for several reasons like Spring provides a dependency injection and it provides powerful transaction management capabilities and Spring provides a good integration with other frameworks such as Hibernate, Sturts, etc. And Spring framework provides Spring MUC framework for building web applications. All right. So Spring is very popular for these reasons. Now let's understand what is a problem using Spring framework and how Spring Boot addresses that problem. Well, basically Spring based applications have a lot of configurations. For example, whenever we develop Spring MUC web application using Spring MUC, then we need to configure component scan, dispatcher servlet, view resolver and among other things. And whenever we use Hibernate in a same Spring MUC application, then we need to configure data source, entity manager or session factory and transaction manager among other things. And when we use cache or message queue or NoSQL database in the same Spring MUC application, then we need to configure cache, message queue, NoSQL database related configurations, isn't it? So basically, we need to configure a lot of stuff in a Spring based applications. Now let's understand this configuration in an action. Well, here I have created Spring MUC Hibernate crude web application using Spring framework. Next, let's explore this project and let's try to understand what is the problem with this project and how Spring Boot addresses that problem. So let's go with pom.xml file. So in a pom.xml file, we have configured a lot of dependencies. For example, we have configured Spring MUC related dependencies, Hibernate related dependencies, and the UI technology related dependencies and the database related dependencies. Okay, so we have basically configured a lot of dependencies and we have managed the version of all these dependencies manually. Okay, next, if you go to the configuration package, so here we have configured the dispatcher servlet. Next, we have used Hibernate. So we have configured the different Spring Beans for Hibernate. For example, here we have configured the Session Factory Spring Bean. Here we have configured Data Source Spring Bean. Here we have configured Transaction Manager Spring Bean. Next, if you go to WebMC Config class, here we have configured Spring Bean for View Resolver. Okay. Now let's understand the problems with this project. Well, whenever we develop one more Spring MUC Hibernate project, then we need to configure the same configuration. For example, we need to configure Session Factory Spring Bean, Data Source Spring Bean, Hibernate Transaction Manager Spring Bean, and View Resolver Spring Bean, and Dispatcher Servlet, and we need to configure all these dependencies, right? So whenever we create a new project, that is Spring MUC Hibernate new project, then we need to basically configure all these Spring Beans, right? So this is basically a problem. We don't have to configure the same things again and again. Okay. So there should be an automated process, isn't it? So the solution like why not we automate this configuration. So whenever we create a new Spring MSI Hibernate project, then this configuration will be automatically configured for that project. So this is what the Spring Boot, you know, addresses the problem. So Spring Boot will automatically provides this configuration whenever we add a particular jar dependency in a you know our prom.xml file so spring boot will automatically configure these spring beans whenever it will find a jar dependency in a prom.xml file so this is the first problem the spring boot addresses second problem is so if we use spring framework without spring boot then we need to explicitly configure the server and we need to deploy a spring application in that server for example let's say we want to use tomcat server to deploy this spring based application then we need to download the Tomcat server from the internet and we need to set up that Tomcat server in ID and then we can able to deploy Spring, you know, application in that Tomcat server, isn't it? So this is a manual process. So this problem also Spring Boot addresses. Okay. So Spring Boot provides embedded Tomcat server to quickly deploy Spring based applications. We don't have to manually set up the Tomcat server. So this is the second problem the Spring Boot addresses. Next problem is if you go to Pomodoro.xml file, and if you look at the dependencies over here, we have added a lot of dependencies. For example, we have added Spring MUC related dependencies, Hibernate related dependencies, UI technology related dependencies and database related dependencies. And we have manually managed 
the version of all these dependencies over here. So this is a pain for developers to manually manage the compatible versions of all these framework related dependencies, right? So this is problem also the Spring Boot addresses, okay? So Spring Boot provides a starter dependencies that will internally manage the versions of all the framework related dependencies. Okay, so let me quickly recap. Spring Boot will automatically configure these common Spring Beans whenever it will find a jar dependency in a pom.xml file. Next, Spring Boot provides embedded Tomcat server to quickly deploy Spring based application. Next, Spring Boot provides a set of starter dependencies that we can quickly use to manage the dependencies and its compatible versions. Well, in upcoming lectures, we will see how Spring Boot provides automatic configuration and how Spring Boot provides embedded Tomcat server and how Spring Boot provides starter dependencies. Okay, just try to understand what is the problem with Spring Framework and what problem the Spring Boot addresses. Well, Spring team developed a Spring Boot on top of Spring Framework to quickly create and bootstrap Spring based applications. Okay, so Spring Boot is not a different framework. Spring Boot is an extension of Spring Framework and it addresses different problems of Spring Framework. Okay, and the main goal of Spring Boot is to quickly create Spring based applications without requiring developers to write the same boilerplate configuration again and again. Well, Spring Boot takes an opinionated approach for the configuration. For example, whenever we add a Spring Boot starter web dependency, then Spring Boot assumes that we are trying to create a Spring MUC project. So Spring Boot will configure all the Spring Beans related to Spring MUC. Next, Spring Boot provides important features like Spring Boot starters, Spring Boot auto configuration, externalized configuration, Spring Boot actuator, and easy to use embedded servlet container support. Okay, so in next lecture, we'll see all these features in detail. Okay, I hope you understood what is Spring Boot and what problem the Spring Boot addresses. Okay, great. I will see you in the next lecture.